online with Ammer the Internet Guy. Stream it today on your favorite podcast platforms. This podcast focuses on entrepreneurs and business owners, helping them become more successful in conducting their business on the web without being stuck with technology. Hi guys, and welcome to another episode of Online. You know, many entrepreneurs, including myself, are too busy with, you know, growing their business and life in general, especially if you do have a family as well as your business. And we forget to look after ourselves, especially when it comes to eating healthy. I have met so many entrepreneurs that do the same thing. You eat what's available, you eat what's quick, what's easy, but not necessarily what's good for you. Some of us have developed some problems, others didn't, but overall, we are not following the best advice and we are not actually eating what's good for our bodies and our health, uh, which can have very bad effects not only on the long-term health, but also on your level of energy. You need to be full of energy in order to get things done, in order to do more and to grow your business and be more useful to the people around you and to your clients. But many of us are not doing that and many of us actually suffer from different things that could be related to our nutrition. So today I have a special guest who's going to tell us all about the right nutrition. And we're going to explore the concept of holistic nutrition, as well as how do nutritions do their stuff online. So without further ado, let's meet Nabila. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of online. Today I have Nabila here with me. She is a registered holistic nutritionist. Did I say that right? You did say it right. Okay, good. Because sometimes I make mistakes in my own name. Uh, <laughs> That's like, great. <laughs> so, Nabila, I have so many questions for you. I don't know where to start. So, okay. um, one of the things that caught my attention yes. when I was looking at your website is the story behind, you right. know, how you became a nutritionist. And sure. as I read a little bit more, there was a lot of acting and stuff. Like, I didn't, oh my God, she's done that and she's done that. So, I'm going to let you... <laughs> Are you surprised? Tell us the story. <laughs> Very shy like, personality, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, so my journey to nu- nutrition started when I was younger. I was uh, always reading like Prevention Magazine or Health Magazine while all the other teenagers were Sweet Valley High or <laughs> Teen Beat. And it was a, a passion of mine. I used to drive my mom crazy when we went grocery shopping. I used to be like, no, don't buy that, buy this. Um, then I became close to, you know, I was preteen and teenager and... Um, watching the shows on TV and the other girls talk and really cluing into the big uh, body obsession that we have. Um, I wasn't overweight by any means, but it started to put me on that path of being body conscious. Then I um, got involved in the modeling acting industry, sometimes in front of the camera, sometimes behind as an agent. So Through all that pressure there to look perfect, to look skinny, I developed an eating disorder and an addiction to diet pills. So the effect, so the ephedra stuff, Um, you know, it makes you feel like you're on speed. You've got so much energy. And when you eat, you only need to eat two bites of food and you've got all this energy and it was an amazing high. And so between the diet pills and the pretty much starving yourself, I developed an eating disorder. Um, fast forward to one day when I was driving to an acting class and I had to pull over because I felt so sick from not having eaten that day. And I had to go to the, the closest fast food restaurant to eat. And I said, there's no way I can sustain myself this way. I have to learn how to eat and love my body and stuff again. So I went to the Canadian School of Natural Nutrition because I wanted something that's holistic. That's also going to talk about um, why you eat the way you do and the self-esteem piece and Mm -hmm. mind, body, spirit. So through taking that course, I realigned my passion for nutrition. So that's that's the short version of this story. It's kind of like (laughs) you started doing it before this huge awareness of, of, you know, organic stuff and eating healthy. And like you probably were were doing it when nobody else thought of that, right? Yeah. And so it's really funny when there's a new cast that says the newest superfood or the newest way to eat. And I'm like, duh. (laughs) You're just figuring this out. This is news to you now. I mean, you know, I'm from the Middle East, right? Okay. And we eat dates. Right, which is so good for you. I take dates sometimes to, um, 
games, like mm-hmm. when we used to play soccer before COVID, right. and they say, oh, these are superfoods. I'm thinking like, dude, they're just dead. <laughs> like, <laughs> we never think about it this way. They are superfoods, though. But yeah, it's it's like no brainer to us. But uh... yeah, I, there, I I think there are a lot of superfoods, not just dates. I think I, I was told about something else, but I can't remember it. Mm-hmm. You're probably going to tell me in a bit. Um, the part that I think many people wouldn't understand is mm-hmm. what's the difference between a nutritionist and a dietitian. Oh, this is where I get in tr- <laughs> This is where I'm going to get in trouble. So typically, you don't have to say anything bad. <laughs> So typically when you go to a dietitian, they um, point to the the food, the government's food chart of you got to eat this many carbs, this many proteins, this much fat. Um, some of them talk about food quality, some of them don't. Um, so that's one thing. And the other thing is, if you go in for heart problems, they're only going to look at your heart. Mm. Where if someone comes in for heart, I'm going to look, oh, well, how's your liver? How's your di- Are you diabetic? Is that like, mm. I will look at how the whole body system works together as opposed to one piece. And also, I don't look for band-aids. I look for the root cause. Like, you know, like traditional medicine, even here's uh, some statins or some metformin if you have diabetes. I'm like, but why are you getting that? You need to address the why mm. so you can prevent future damage. Maybe even not have to take medication down the road um i also look at your mindset your mind your what's your soul calling you to do what are you missing what traumas and diseases are hidden in your body because i really believe that de- diseases hopefully not covid yeah hopefully <laughs> right <laughs> what's just getting going yeah, what's mean? hiding in your body okay go ahead <laughs> fear um so you know diseases are your way your body's way of saying or your soul's way of saying there's some there's a bigger picture there's a trauma that hasn't been healed mm. or an emotion that is blocked and th- we can't get your attention any other way by making you sick um it's too bad that it can't be more specific and to hit you on the head and tell you exactly what the problem is but i guess that's where i come in because i can ask you but the right question it's actually i don't think many people would know the relation yeah between nutrition Mm -hmm. and mental health not just physical health yeah you know that some food may make you sad some food make you oh absolutely i mean we know coffee makes you hyper that's you know (laughs) everybody knows that but like there are some foods that can make that you know uh change your mood or or whatever Mm -hmm. so like food additives especially we were talking about adhd and uh, yeah yeah and yellow dye number five the tyrosine that's one of the main culprits with um, affecting your mood. I mean, all of them really, but that w- that's been the biggest. Um, aspartame is a neurotoxin, and people drink the diet. Oh coke. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the, uh, it's considered a neurotoxin. I think it's also in uh, chewing gum. Yeah, some chewing yeah. gums. The the I don't know the sugar free chewing gum. <laughs> yeah, um, better to have a little bit of sugar once in a while than have the chemical stuff, and that's. Uh, the same with fat. Um, when a product is fat-free, that means that there's more sugar. So if you look at uh, fat-free milk, look at how much sugar is in there. So it's better okay. to have 2% or full fat and just have less of it. So that's the trap a lot of people buy fat If you can stuff. find full fat milk. like If you can find it. <laughs> um, but that's... I, I, I didn't understand the 1%, 2%, 3% because where I, where I came from, it was either um, uh, skimmed yeah. or milk. Like there was no percentage. Yeah. It just says milk, skim milk is, skimmed. Skim That's skim it. is bad for you because yeah. they up the sugar. So any food that has low fat is going to up the sugar. Up the sugar. Well, it has to taste good. To maintain right? the taste. Yeah. 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 Well, there are scientists that are hired specifically to make food addictive for us. So food companies will hire scientists to put the right amount of fat, salt, and sugar. I mean, look at in sugar. It. Yeah. Look, they slipped sugar into yeah. everything in our life. Like you've got Sauces, sugar. Sauces, ketchup. You, I mean. I'm aware of it that like now I know it's in a lot of stuff. Yeah. But many people like you'll be unsuspecting because you're looking at how many spoons of sugar you put in your coffee or tea. Mm-hmm. But you're actually not thinking about what other stuff you had today yes. that has <laughs> sugar. And it's not it's not your chocolate. It's it's actually things you didn't it's suspect. Sneaky. Yeah, like salad mm-hmm. dressing, uh barbecue. Milk. Sauce. Your milk has sugar. <laughs> people don't know that. Milk well, yeah. dairy is a sugar. Yeah, a lot right. of it has sugar. It it is a sugar, the lactose. The lactose. Yeah. And uh and the juices that say no added sugar, that doesn't mean it's sugar free. It means 
the sugar comes from the juice. They didn't just inject more sugar yeah, into it. <laughs> exactly. That's why it's better to eat the whole fruit than the juice. Yeah. So always read the label. Always read the label. I'm interested to know how would someone know that they need help in that domain? Like it, it's not something that, I mean, forgive me, like I don't know much about the industry. Yeah. But I, I, I wouldn't dare to call it not mainstream, but... Mm -hmm. I've never heard anyone saying, I have a problem, I need a nutritionist. Right. So how would somebody know? <laughs> like, <laughs> Well, I have. <laughs> Otherwise, I'd have no clients. Um, so I deal a lot with um, chronic fatigue, um, specifically adrenal fatigue so and mental wellness um, on one end. So, you know, if you're all constantly tired, if it's bedtime and you're tired but wired and can't fall asleep, oh, yeah. if you're dragging yourself throughout the day and need caffeine to get through um if your stress is off the, if you can't handle if your stress is off the charts and you can't i saw that don't worry um, she said caffeine okay <laughs> um yeah if your stress is off the charts or little things like if you spilled that cup of coffee and you went completely berserk and it ruins your whole day you're like mm. oh your adrenals are messed up and those are they sit on top of your kidneys and they're responsible for your flight or fr flight or, f or freeze freeze okay hormones um so we're not cave people where you know if a dinosaur is chasing you and you're it's over with you went into your cave and you can relax we've got the stress that's always there whether we're thinking about yeah. it so am i it's covid am i gonna lose my job am i gonna get sick you know my family this that so that's stuff that you're stressed about all the time whether you realize it or not so yeah. now your cortisol is firing you probably end up time. eating the wrong food as well oh, oh for sure God. that's a big reason for <laughs> you get food stressed and then you eat food that makes you more stressed well food can be soothing too yeah. right unfortunately um so because we're not going to the parasympathetic mode which is the opposite of when you're in fight or flight mode um the cortisol is going all the time and that can affect diabetes too so okay you said cortisol right not yeah. cortisone no, cortisol. L. cortisol okay yeah I'm just, yeah, because uh, many people won't be watching this, will be listening to it. So. Yeah, that's the cream, the cortisol, this is the extra. Yeah, and then um, there was something else that picked my attention as well, and you, you said it quite well when you said I was body conscious, because I think many people are, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, we, we sometimes think it's only women. I mean, mm -hmm. some men are. Yeah, uh, men are too. Yeah, some men are like that, and... Uh, I mean, some are just lucky like me. I don't care. But <laughs> <laughs> Just a blast. Yeah, just wash your face, take your shower. That's it. Well, I don't it's... need 10 different tubes of products to put on my skin. <laughs> well, it's definitely a bias and equivalent to being to racism. Any other is, is, is because. Yeah. But no, I, I have a daughter. She's a teenager. Mm -hmm. So I get like sometimes she yeah. does things and I think like that doesn't make any sense. No. But anyway, she's a. It's almost like it's girl. a rite of passage when you get a certain age, you start talking about your weight. But yeah. um, you can be a size zero or size two, and that doesn't mean you're healthier than a size 14. So if... That's the thing. Like I, I'll give you an example from soccer, because that's what I know. Right. There's this great player who just died like a month or so ago, Maradona. Okay. And uh, he was one of the greatest soccer players in the world. But when you look at him, even as his prime, right. he looks chubby. Like the guy is short and chubby, right? right? But you see him running, mm -hmm. man, he's like, I don't know, a gazelle or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But the first moment you look at the player and you think like, oh, this guy, he's the greatest player in the world. Really? Are you kidding? Yeah. But then you see him and you think like, oh, my God. So it's kind of is is is. To me, it looked like the weight wasn't important. Yeah. The shape of the body wasn't important. If he had the health, the stamina and, the, and, and I don't know, enough muscle. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, unless you're morbidly obese or anorexic, so the two extreme ones, yeah. there's no scientific, for sure, this is the weight you have to be to be healthy. You can't find that anywhere. That says a size yeah. two is apart the from the media. <laughs> apart from the media, so you can be a yeah. range of weights and still be healthy. Um, so this whole body positive movement also, there's something about that that bothers me. I believe in being comfortable in your skin, no matter what weight you yeah. are. I just don't believe in saying I'm body positive. I'm gonna have half a dozen donuts, right? <laughs> it's not an excuse. The, the three day. <laughs> Like, it's uh, not an excuse to be, I'm body positive, I'm going to eat whatever I want, whenever I want. You still have 
a responsibility to fulfill your soul's calling and your and your purpose in life and you need to do that with the healthiest body possible god the universe whatever you believed in gave you this as your shell yeah. you need to not abuse it so yeah there's nothing wrong with no i'm thinking today. turtle since you said shell no, <laughs> let's go get chocolate after this wink wink uh <laughs> so yeah size doesn't necessarily mean you're unhealthy to a certain point there are more disadvantages when you're bigger so for sure. nutrition but, yeah is not necessarily a diet right it's a lifestyle it's a lifestyle because, diets don't work you can't sustain yeah. it it's a life it's i'm teaching you a lifestyle and i like doing the crowding out um method where instead of saying don't have sugar don't have caffeine don't eat processed food people know that i rather tell them what to eat to be optimal and then their yeah. body will naturally not want the junk food without, gravitate towards yeah, without me telling them anything they'll just naturally they naturally just don't eat the bad stuff because they put so much of the nutrient rich stuff in their yeah. body right once you're full you're full actually really like mm -hmm. if you think about it it's a uh, the the problem that we have these days in general mm -hmm. is lack of time i think we are ourselves contributing to this. So of course. <laughs> and since a lot of my listeners to this podcast are mm -hmm. entrepreneurs and business owners, mm -hmm. I think they can relate because you kind of bury yourself in work. And then as a result, you don't spend enough time thinking about what you're eating. Mm -hmm. You just grab whatever you can find, good or bad yeah. for you. It doesn't matter. You just like, and maybe some days you're eating healthy because mm -hmm. that, was what's available at the time but exactly. in general like i don't know i think we go more for high salt high protein high energy i don't know like sometimes even we don't eat real food mm -hmm. in favor of eating some bars yeah, yeah i don't know i like, mean it just takes a little planning yeah so what how can somebody who's really busy like what what should they do well, first they have to be aware, but like yeah. <laughs> when the awareness kicks in, what do you do? Well, you, I mean, you can batch cook. You can go grocery shopping on a Saturday and then cook everything on a, for the week on a Sunday, which is something that I can teach you. I do meal plans for people. So then with a grocery list. So even if you just mm. want to do the meal plan that I've given you, everything's laid out there. Um, even I get super busy. So I there's a lot of good food services. So not skip not the ones where you have to prep your own meal. Those are great too. But I mean I'm vegetarian. No, but they have, yeah, the, those actually give you what's on their menu. Like you don't control the menu, you just select something. Right. So I so being vegetarian, I've got two meal service is that I use planted and gome meals. So they they give me meals that are already put together. Um, and they give you like a, a really good menu that you can choose from. Yeah. So I get super busy myself. I'm, tell, I'm telling all you guys how to eat healthy and then I don't have yeah. time to. So, I mean, worst case scenario, you can find meal people who deliver meals that are already prepped for you. Single size, family size for not that much money. Like I'm looking at how much I would have spent on groceries plus time is money. The time, yeah. yeah right. But, but... And then I look at how much I'm paying for this food and it's it's so cheap. I, I still don't have a scientific way to calculate whether those meal plans are better than shopping. I mean, once you add the time into that equation, mm -hmm. of course, that there'll be, you know, if you put, you should always put uh, a value mm -hmm. on your time, mm -hmm. even the leisure time. I'm not saying don't have leisure time, do have leisure time, mm -hmm. but like it has to be programmed, right? If it's your weekend, it's right. your weekend, that's fine. But um, but what I'm saying is, like, if you're going to go to the grocery shop twice a week, spend an hour, that's two hours of your work time, mm -hmm. right? Or time that you could spend with your family or something. Right. So uh, how much does that cost, plus the cost of whatever you bought, plus the cost of cooking it yes. and <laughs> cutting the stuff and whatever, yes. versus something that comes to you washed and cut and all what you need is just to mix it. It's not that expensive either, so, yeah. yeah. So we're not going to recommend certain brands, but like they're there. They're about, I don't know, 10 or more. Right. So you could do that or you can batch cook on the weekend. Yeah. So instead of making um, a cup of rice here and there, just make a whole bunch of rice and then all the things that you would cut, what pre -cut about, your vegetables. What about just... breakfast? Because it's, it's it's an important meal of the day and it kind of sets the tone for how yeah. the rest of your day, how you'll feel for the rest yeah, of so the day. So your breakfast should be high protein. Okay. You know, it's not the standard grab a bagel, a donut, or a muffin. It should be 
Um, about 30 grams. Um, so you can do a couple. So if you're not vegetarian, you eat what? Eggs? You can eat eggs. If you're a vegetarian, if you're vegan, you can do a tofu scramble. A tofu scramble, okay. Um, protein shake. I do, I've got tons of fruits and veg and super. Is it pets. the same protein shake that bodybuilders do? Like the, the so big I, tub I, with I the powder a, in I it? I put a ton of like super superfoods and superfood powders and green powders in there and then i okay. either do a hemp protein because that's considered a complete protein and it's flavorless um or i do a new zealand whey okay yeah so this drags us to what what are superfood like what foods are considered so superfood, superfood is something foods. that crosses a lot of it has a lot of vitamins and nutrients and but helps with a lot of ailments so if you're looking at almost any condition and what food to eat, broccoli comes up. So broccoli is a superfood because it's good for fiber, cholesterol, blood sugar, adrenals, mm. energy. Um, apples are a superfood. An apple a day keeps the doctor away. Okay. Really true. Um, when we were in school and we're learning about all the different conditions and the corresponding foods, apples came up all the time as well. So it's a food that um, does a lot of multiple things in your body and multiple system health. Okay. Yeah. So apples, broccoli. Yeah. Uh, maca powder is good for hormone balance. Sorry, what powder? Maca powder. M-A-C-A. Maca powder? Yeah. Never heard of it before. So, okay. <laughs> maca powder. It's uh, good for fertility, hormone balance, energy, and stress. So, it's an adaptogen. And you mix it with what? Uh, your protein shake. Okay. Yeah. And the protein shake is, you said, whey. Like you like the New Zealand way. I like the New Zealand way or hemp. I don't H like the hemp. Hemp. Okay, so there's a hemp powder yep. that can go in your yep. wow. Because okay. the hemp is a. I'm very new to this. <laughs> I know. Hemp um has all nine amino acids, so it's a complete ah. protein. So it's just it's a little. So low. don't smoke it. Drink it. Drink it. Don't smoke it. <laughs> <laughs> Not as much fun, but um the hemp is it's a complete protein. It's just low on L lysine. Wow is one of the amino acids that it's a little bit lower in, but it's still in there. So do you, okay, if you're going to buy, like, seriously, hemp powder, do you have to go to the marijuana stores to buy it, or is no, it a supermarket? No, you can buy it in a soup. <laughs> no, you buy it in, you can get it in a health food store. Okay, so, like, yeah, yeah. any any store that sells healthy food. Yeah, I just, the, the vegan proteins don't personally work for me because uh, pea protein is really hard. For a lot of people to digest. Okay. So that's why I'd rather go with the hemp or the whey. That's good. The New Zealand whey is good because they're grass-fed, non-GMO. So they're really clean. So where, like, I don't know, where is it extracted from? Is it sheep? No? Yes? Oh, dairy. <laughs> what, it depends what Where does you whey want. come from? Well, dairy, but, you, dairy. but okay. it could be from sheep or something. You just have to uh, look okay. at the bottle. Yeah, I don't know. When you say New Zealand, now I'm imagining like a big herd of sheep yeah. somewhere. Uh, sorry, Kiwis. I know, like, yeah. but you're the ones who told me that you have more sheep than people in New Zealand. So just there's I'm different types. Just repeating what I heard. There's different types. You can even get grasshopper protein. You just have to read the bottle. Grasshopper. Yeah. Okay. So I mean, you're now reminding me of some of the experiences I had in my travel day, but you know, mm -hmm. I couldn't. I like I, in Asia, of course, in some parts, like you get healthy meals out of things that look like bugs mm -hmm. and they're very popular mm -hmm. and in zambia there was an open buffet and there was crocodile meat and oh. i couldn't I, I couldn't try it like okay <laughs> you, you see the crocodile hung oh no and but when i passed so what you do normally you just tell the chef they'll cut a piece of the meat and grill it for you right mm. but when i just got there the smell of the raw meat was so bad. Like I don't, yeah. it's fresh and everything. It's just, but it's crocodile, right? So it doesn't smell like the regular lamb or beef or whatever mm -hmm. we're used to. I, and I was there, either. but I I couldn't. I and then of course there was snake meat as well, and I I couldn't either. Yeah, so I didn't I didn't experience like a lot with food, but nowadays, um, I like the different. Like I like okay the regular ingredients. So. I'm not going to, I don't know, like gamble with the ingredients. Mm -hmm. So it's either going to be fish, beef, lamb, chicken. That's it. Like, right. right. But different cuisines, like, because you have the same ingredients and you can cook them in different sources or different ways or whatever. Right. And Middle Easterns, we just add 
garlic and onion to anything and right. that's it. That's <laughs> exactly. Lots of garlic, lots of olive oil, right. and it should be fine. And yeah, falafel is Egyptian, by the way. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, how would you, you know, as I was saying, like people sometimes need help, but they don't know they need help. So we talked about if you're feeling, have feelings of fatigue for no reason. Like, you know, if you're tired because you've done something that made you tired, that's yeah, different. that's fine. But Unexplained fatigue. Yeah. If you've been, if you've been sitting the whole day and yes. you slept well, yes. but you're feeling tired or having some pain that's, you know, you don't have no idea yeah. where it's coming from. Right. And if you're having digestion issues, hormone imbalances... Um, yeah. You know, you're feeling gassy and bloated all the time, no matter what you eat. Um, that's related to um, adrenal fatigue, too. So there's that. I also do. Um, so there's the fatigue and the the mental wellness side of it, which is your anxiety and depression and stress. Mm. So, of course, if you're depressed, yeah. if you're ex depressed, if you're depressed, depressed the food is not going to change that. But I need to get to the root cause to yeah, find it out could be how to alleviate that. Yeah. Which could be biochemical. It could be just a nutrient, macronutrient uh, deficiency, essential fatty acid, protein, amino acid deficiencies. Anywhere from that, which is the easiest thing to look at, to the deeper stuff like block trauma. Because your mind is trying, yeah. you're, it's trying to protect you from something that's happened mm. um, in your past. And so... we. If the nutrition doesn't work, then we can dig in further. And figure out whether yeah. you actually need to go and see a, a shrink. Or me. Are you going to shrink them too? No. No. <laughs> no, we're going to expand the brain. Um, and then I'm also trained um, from the Institute of the Psychology of Eating. So I'm already I'm also a food relationship coach and a mind-body um, oh, okay. eating coach. So I also work with people who have food addictions, disordered eating, poor body image, binge eating, or chronic dieters. So that's also the other side of my business, too. Oh, perfect. Okay, oh, this, this is good because I think they're pretty much related, right? Like, kind of... I think everyone has disordered eating. It might not be a full-blown anorexia or bulimia, yeah. but it's such a gray scale. And I think everyone's got some kind of, especially as women, for whatever reason, men too. Um, but especially women, just culturally, we're taught... I love chocolate. <laughs> I love There's the sugary one, not the dark one. There is sugar. a place for chocolate too. <laughs> yeah. As long as you don't overdo it, it should be fine. Yes. This looks sometimes like it's hard or I don't know, like it scares me a little bit. Okay. So I want to make it easy for our listeners to, to actually like give them an idea of what I don't want to call it a treatment, but like what a solution looks like. Because you mentioned something about meal plans. So generally, I know that every case, of course, is going to be completely different. But generally speaking, the, the outcome, like when somebody comes to see you, what do they leave with? What do they get like, you know, yeah. as, as their... Well, first of all, you have to understand nutrition is a long game. It's not going to be cured after one session. Yeah. Unlike diet. <laughs> Even that doesn't work. I'm dragging you there. Okay. Um, You're not going to say so... something bad. The initial consultation, we look at micronutrient, macronutrient deficiencies. Um, we look at how your body systems are working together, lifestyle. Do they have to go do like a test, a blood test of some kind, or if they, if it's, if I think they need to, they but they have to go to their physician. I can't yeah, recommend. They're just like, of course. I know yeah, how but, to analyze. But do you want exactly? Do you want it? I mean, the report so that you I can do, look at. I usually yeah. ask for that. When yeah. was their last report, and I can analyze it for them. Um, we also look at things like lifestyle, mindset, mind, body, spirit connection. So we look at all the pieces and then uh, we put a holistic plan to them together with them. Um, and I do it slowly. I don't give them everything all at once because that's going to overwhelm them. Um, I do put a, a food, a, a suggestion of foods mm. they should eat accompanied by some recipes or a food plan. So they can either do it on their own and just pick it off my list or they can, I like doing a recipe book more than a meal plan. That way they have yeah. a little more control. Um, so they can either do the recipes I suggested or they can just add the foods I suggested to their everyday meals. That's good. So, mm -hmm. and you don't scare them so they don't get like, boom. I don't give them a hundred recommendations right yeah. out the gates. That's why you have to come more than once because it's a, it's a stepping. There's a little bit of a change management in there. What do you mean? Like, 
you know, in general, we as human beings, beings are resistant to change. Yeah. So if somebody is trying to make you change like 180 degrees, yeah. you'd always work against it, even though, you know, yeah. like you went, you paid for it. Like, you know, like you've done the talk, but yeah. when it comes to you doing the actual work, yes. there's some resistance. That's why I think the nutrition is a lot. Of, it's a lot of life coaching, too. Yeah. Than anything. I mean. When you come to a session, I feel like I'm coaching you or I don't want to say giving you therapy because I'm not a therapist, but I feel like we're talking about your issues for most of the appointments. And then the food part is just a small part of it. Um, You know, and you got to keep them accountable. And that's what going to a nutritionist will keep you accountable. We can tweak things along the way. So if the food initial food plan didn't work for you or you want to change up the recommendations, we can do that week to week. Nice. What about... Um, like I've seen some bits and pieces uh, talking about uh, was it I think it was sport optimization or the other one was like an energy kind of energy booster I mean we've talked about people who may have a problem Mm -hmm. and then they come see you to figure out what's this problem where it's coming from and how they can get over it Mm -hmm. by doing some small changes here and there and specifically in their nutrition as well as their lifestyle and balance. Right. Um, but what what if somebody doesn't have a, a problem as per se, mm-hmm. but they want to have more energy or they want to, you know, they're competing, they're sports people, they're, they want yeah. to get like kind of the maximum output, if, if that makes well, sense. Well, I mean, there's no, everyone's different. So there's no cookie cutter yeah. answer I can give you to that. But in general, to increase your energy, you want to look at eating foods with vitamin C, your B vitamins, your zinc is very important, vitamin D. Okay. Uh, magnesium is responsible for 300 plus processes in your body. Um, you want to make sure you're getting all your uh, essential fatty acids, all your not uh, complete proteins. I mean, that's the basic, but to give you, I can't give you a cookie cutter. Yeah, answer. no, but I yeah. mean, like nutrition can help with that too. It's not uh, only to solve to. a problem, it's actually... yeah. Even like even if you don't have any problems whatsoever, you can come in. You for can a get tweak. better at something. Yeah, I mean, you can come in for a tweak. I mean, yeah. you go to a doctor every year, hopefully for a checkup. Well, why why not go see a nutritionist every year for a checkup? Yeah, because there's stuff that the you doctor change the oil to your car. Yeah. Why don't change your own oil? Like you yeah, know? you're the there's stuff your doctor can't look at, but we can. So even if you just want to do maintenance and see me once twice a year, just to make sure everything's on track. That sounds good. How do people find you in general? Like, what do you find that they come from referrals? Yeah, referrals. My website. So my company is Mindful Nourishment. So a lot of it on from my website, my so my search engine optimization, I guess, is really good because a lot of people find me that way. They just find you online. Yeah, and uh, and and referrals is huge. From like word of mouth. Yeah, previous clients that are happy with my work. Um, if you look at my website, there's a ton of testimonials on there. So there's definitely people that are happy. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, yeah. That, that's good. And I know you're redoing your website. I just don't know who's doing it. Yeah, I wonder who. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it, it's interesting because like, um, I'll speak a little bit about websites in general because mm-hmm. that's what I speak about all the time. But in, in general, what I liked is that you had so much content already there, mm-hmm. like the biggest problem for any web designer anywhere in the world mm-hmm. is content. Right. Because many people want to build a website, but they, they didn't write anything yet. Oh and that's or, me yeah. hold, and that's me holding <laughs> me back because I can say so much more. <laughs> no, you've got a lot of stuff. I mean, I do understand that some of it might have been written some time ago and you want to, mm-hmm. you know, edit it now mm-hmm. and make it better or refocus on some of the stuff we discussed right. today. But in general... There was lots of stuff. There's so many blog posts there. There's lots of stuff on, on the different pages. Uh, you had, I think, was it a recipe? There was a downloadable, a PDF downloadable. Yeah, that's the, uh, if you sign up for my newsletter, you get a, a free. Um, was it a meal plan or a recipe? I can't remember. It's a remember. free recipe book on energy, but uh, that's going to depend on when my web designer gets that. Oh, there. no, no, no. Your <laughs> web designer is too slow. <laughs> So if you want to find me, it's Mindful Nourishment and eventually the opt-in. .ca. Yeah, .ca and .ca. eventually that link to get that free recipe book will be up there. So keep looking. It's uh, got fabulous recipes to help you boost your energy and superfoods and energy boosting food. And then you will get um, a monthly newsletter from me 
with tips and stuff yeah. that I don't share with anyone except for on the newsletter. Oh, the newsletter. So it's not, yeah. The, it's guys, not so information. These that, things, yeah, if you're interested, these things are not going to be published on the site itself. Yeah, it's They're only going to be secret, coming via the newsletter. Secret stuff to you guys. Yeah, and like any newsletter, like if you want to unsubscribe, feel free to, but if you find it useful, you can just continue to. You can unsubscribe. Yeah. You can use me for the recipe. You can book. download the thing and unsubscribe, right? <laughs> yes, I, I mean, know. I'm not saying do that, but like in general. <laughs> I'm sure there's some people who yeah. do subscribe for things. And then you're at the liberty to unsubscribe if you wanted to. So it's not, you're not, there's no gun held at your head. And I'm not going to be those annoying people who spam you every day or every week. with. Um, oh, I love the one which is, uh, you know, when you're doing your MailChimp setup, there's somewhere there in the settings that says, send one last mail to people who unsubscribe and i find this a bit yeah. stupid like i don't want to hear from you and then an email and yeah. i subscribe and like this is to let you know you've unsubscribed <laughs> oh really like <laughs> obviously are you sure you want to go you sure yeah, are you sure like yeah exactly do you want to cut off your hand before you click on that oh, button gosh. uh we have a lot of fun so one question about websites in general and i'm, I'm not asking this because I want to tell people who's doing it. They probably figured it out by now. But when did you realize you wanted to make a change? Like, what was the point between yeah, well, the old website, which is the one that's active right now, and probably the new one is going to be up and running in a week yeah, or Yeah, well, I've been, in business, for, I've been in business for seven years, and I've grown up a lot since then. Was that done seven years ago? Yeah. Oh, wow. I didn't, you didn't tell me that. You didn't ask me. <laughs> Um, you know, I wanted a more sophisticated logo. My mindset has changed. I've been super educated over the seven years, even more, um, taken more courses, um, seen different things in the world. So I'm, you know, I'm a grown up now. <laughs> and so I want to, and I'm changing my offerings because I've changed my training and stuff and what I'm passionate about. So it just, uh, it was time for a rebrand. So it did look like it's not representing you anymore. It yeah. I mean, it's a great website, rep but it, it represented you back then. Yeah, it, or back then it was an awesome website. Plus, you know, I wanted to do the opt-in and a couple of other things yeah. now. So Seven years ago, I mean, like, that that's a lot of time. I mean, I usually see people after two years because normally people change their websites in every couple of years or so. All the cells in your body rejuvenate itself every seven years. So it's like I'm a brand new person, right? <laughs> <laughs> so the cells of the, the bits and bytes of the website are rejuvenating now. Exactly. All right. I mean, this has been like an eye opener for me. Good. I'm still going to hide my bad food from you because you tell me off every time you see <laughs> like uh, fried potatoes or whatever. <laughs> Actually, he volunteers to me what he's eating. I have said, <laughs> he'll come here and I will have said nothing and he'll start defending his food choices. And I'm like, I yeah, because first I'll show Nabila the salad. And then, yeah, it's good. It's nice and healthy. And then I'll put the dressing on top oh, of the geez. salad. And now he's got like lots of sugary stuff. I haven't even said anything to him and he, he admits things to me or justifies. Yeah. Me, so. It's the way things go here. I think people should just hire me to follow them all day and knock food out of their face. <laughs> <It, laughs> uh, have a stick or, like, or, or a golf, yeah. a golf club. <laughs> Except for what's going to happen when I leave them at night. They might just eat it all. Uh, or, or sit like friends with a big tub of ice cream and like, I don't know. Those Baskin Robbins big tubs. Or Dairy Queen. Or yeah, I don't want anyone to be left out. Like, okay, we're not going to speak about ice cream companies. Are you craving ice cream right not now? Not really, no. I'm, I'm, I'm okay. I'm probably going to have another coffee. At this time? Yeah. And yeah, I mean, that's, I that's I was meant to ask for, you about, about something, dream. but I'll ask you off podcast because I don't want to bore people with all these details. Coffee uh, stresses your body and your adrenals, yeah. right? So if you have it this close to bedtime, it's not good. Okay. That's okay. But you stay up late, so. Yeah, exactly. I'm not. <laughs> I I I'm not planning to sleep anytime soon. Because you have to work on someone's website. On some, exactly on someone's <laughs> website. Oh man, my weekend is gone. <laughs> <laughs> oh thank you very much for coming today Nabila um and uh, I think yeah we've we've you've opened my eyes to a lot of Good. of the things especially the energy part and I'm going to be bugging you to learn a little bit more get a free consultation okay? which is something she offers on the website too to some people <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. So contact me, Mindful Nourishment, once the opt-in is in. You can choose that. And yes, uh, I will do a complimentary discovery call 
with anyone who thinks they need to tweak their nutrition, have low energy, anxiety, depression, disordered eating, uh, any of those things, just uh, we'll have a chat. It's free. Hire me, don't hire me. At least uh, yeah, use it. Use the use at least yeah. yeah. Talk about it. Like figure out if this is something yeah, for I'm, you. If I can leave you with just even one technique and tip that you can take away, whether you work with me or not, after the consultation, I'm happy. So and you can speak with Nabil and go have a cake after. <laughs> That's what he said. Not me. He said. Thank you very much. Bye. Have a good day. You too.